church say amen. Amen. This is indeed a blessing once again. God has seen fit to allow us to be once again on this Lord's day. We just want to be continue to thank the Lord for what he's done for us. We can't thank him enough. But sometimes we don't realize what all he's done for us. And one day we'll get there and we'll be more appreciative of what he has done for us and then we can uplift his name even more. Uh, once again, we'll be thank thankful to you all who have uh, shown up today to, to worship God in spirit and in truth. And, you know, it should be more, you know, we, we look outside and see what's going on in this world and sometimes we find it hard to believe some of the things we hear or see on the news over and over again. We don't have to go to different countries and, you know, sometimes try to blame things. Well, it's in that country. You know, we can look at how things are going here. So that should give us the uh, uh, motivation to want to serve God because of these perilous times. Turn your Bibles to John 12, 30 and verse 34. That's where our scripture reading has come from, and I will read them once again. John 12, 30 through 34. And it reads, Jesus answered and said, This voice came not because of me, but for your sakes. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. This he said, signifying what death he should die. The people answered him, We have heard out of the law that Christ abideth forever. And how sayest thou, the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? Some 2,000 years ago, a little infant was raised from a manger. He was carried by his parents into the city to pay taxes. He was in the synagogue teaching as opposed to being taught as a young man. Eventually, he was apprehended in a garden, taken from one hall to another. Eventually, he was raised up on the cross of Calvary. He was brought down off of that cross and buried in a borrowed tomb of Joseph of Arimathea. Some three days later, he was raised up again from the grave location. He walked the earth some 40 or so days. He finds himself in Acts chapter 1 while talking with the apostles. A cloud descends. He steps on it. And he was risen again. He was raised as an infant. He was raised up on the cross. And he was raised up from the tomb. And he's again been raised out, risen out of this environment. Jesus said, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. So it's not about the preacher. It's not a, about he in whom we or better yet, it's about he in whom we preach. And if we preach him, then it will draw all men unto him. And when he draws you, you've been drawn. <coughs> Think with me on this subject. 
It's our time to lift him up. It's our time to lift him up. For some 1,500 years, the Hebrews was God's chosen people. They were chosen so that through them, God would send his son into the world for the salvation of man. Even though their father Abraham was chosen because of his unswerving faith in God, his descendants showed themselves to be just as wicked as the people of the world at that time. See, some of God's folks were wicked back then, just like some of God's folks are wicked right now. Turn the Bibles to Romans chapter 9 and verse number 27 and keep your finger there please. Romans 9 and verse number 27 it said Isaiah also cries concerning Israel. Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. I've heard folks say, well, all Israel don't be saved. Well, my Bible tells me though they are, they are like the sand of the sea, and you know how much sand is out there. The Bible said a remnant shall be saved. The definition of a remnant is something left over, a remainder, a remainder, a remainder, a small surviving group of people. I know maybe some of you have been to Menards and you wanted to buy some carpet or some linoleum and you said, well, I don't need that much. I don't need the whole thing. How about I just go over to the remnant section and get a piece? See, we go there because it's on sale. We can get a, 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 a little bit at a nice price. We don't need the whole thing because we're just going to throw it away. But time and time again, the majority has proven themselves to be unworthy of God, of being God's chosen people. See, we need to watch out for the majority. You notice that when you follow the uh, majority, it doesn't always mean that they're right. The Bible says, In Exodus chapter 23, in verse number 2, well, uh, um, let's do 1 and 2 while we at it. The Bible says, thou shalt not raise a false report. Put not thy hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness. And verse number 2 says, thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil, neither shalt thou speak in a cause, to decline after many, to rest judgment. See, God don't want us following the crowd. See, somebody said, well, let's, 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 let's go get them. Well, what's going on? I don't know. They're going. Let's come on, go with us. What are you going to, you know, why would we do something like that? I know y'all probably heard of a lynch mob. We, we, we see TV and the, somebody do a crime that somebody else don't like, then folks start to drink it and this and they say, come on, let's go get them. And we'll bring justice down on them. A lot of people have died. Innocent folk of the crime that they was accused of. Because a lot of folk go off. Uh, 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 the majority wanted to run and, 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 and do what they wanted to do. Look at our society today. 
and look at the church. According to what's out there in the world, there is only a remnant of God's people here. The majority can and will mess you up. Just like it did the children of Israel. Are we still in the book of Romans? If you got you still got your fingers there on Romans uh, chapter 9, we're going to look at verse number uh, uh, 29 this time. The Bible says on uh, verse number 29. I better get there. Romans 9, and verse number 29, it says, And as Isaiah said before, Except the Lord of Sabbath had left us a seed, we had been as uh, 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 Sodoma and been made like unto Gomorrah. What Paul is saying, if it had not been for the promised seed which would come to this world through the children of Israel, he's saying that God would have destroyed them just like he did at Sodom and Gomorrah. See, we need to understand that the children of Israel didn't, uh, did not do anything so great to be spared. They were just like Sodom and Gomorrah. And they would have been destroyed, but it was through Israel that the promised seed would come. And who is that seed? Listen to the book. Galatians chapter 3, verse number 16 says, Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not, and to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. <coughs> See, today... <coughs> It is Christians who are the chosen people of God. Let me let me let me put some emphasis on true Christians, because see, there are so many out there that believe everybody that uh, 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 said the um, Jesus is a Christian, and that's just not true. Mark 13, 20, it says Jesus speaks of his disciple as the elect whom he chose. John 15, 9, Jesus says, I have chosen you out of this out of the word. 2 Thessalonians 2 and 13 says, Paul says that God chose you from the beginning. 1 Peter 2 and 4 says, We are Chosen of God. Now the million dollar question. Why has God chosen us? 1 Peter 2 and verse 9. 1 Peter 2 and verse 9. We should be very familiar with this scripture. 1 Peter 2. 2 and verse 9, it says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. The Bible says, chosen people. See, being God's chosen is not just a privilege. It is a demand that we do our best to be pleasing and acceptable in the eyesight of God. Now, we can't do that by living any old lifestyle that we choose. See, we can't on Monday through Saturday live any way we want to. And we can't let the lust of the 
Our hearts control our every move. Then on Sunday, Sunday comes along and we miraculously become changed folk. You know, I thought the miraculous had to pass us by according to the Bible, but, but Monday through Saturday uh, we're, we're, we're just devils for six days. And then, uh, 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 then we become a Born again Christians, for one. Sometimes we take God for granted. The Bible says in uh, Ephesians 5, verse 6 through 11. Ephesians 5, and verse number 6 through 11. It says, let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. For ye were sometime darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. But rather reprove them. See, when it comes to... Uh, 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 God's folk, he don't want you to be fooled or flim flam by some uh, 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 smooth talker with some useless words. Unprofitable words. Words that just don't do anything. But uh, it said these things uh, 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 come at the wrath of God. Tell you don't, don't fool with them. Then it tells you, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. That means, stay away. Don't be part of that. Unfruitful works is giving the wrong examples. When we teach, that's an unfruitful work also. We got to be careful of how we carry ourselves. If we're going to do something, we have to do it according to to the word of God. Or we can be messing some folk up. Sometimes we don't understand how important it is. <clears throat> but let's see what the Bible says. Turn to James chapter 3. James chapter 3, and I want to show you something. Sometimes we, we, we just don't understand how important our examples are. James chapter 3 and verse number 1. Bible says, My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the great condemnation. A lot of times folk don't understand what that means. When you see that word, well, in this passage of Scripture, this uh, uh, word master means teacher or master teacher. See, the Bible says that the teachers are going to receive the greater condemnation. So if you're teaching something you shouldn't be teaching or you're not living the life you should be after you're teaching and you're showing a, 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 a bad example, the greater condemnation is going to come to those that teach. If I lie to folks here, the folk out there that's watching the video, the, I'm, I'm going to be punished in the end more harshly. Because I'm the teacher. We got a lot of false teachers out there that uh, 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 probably got this one blacking out. They don't want to see that one. 
But it's a, it, it, it is bad. We need to stay away from that and set the right examples by following truth. Church, we just can't do what they do. I know it looks good. I know it may even feel good. Uh, 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 and it may even taste good. But that does not mean we need to get caught up <coughs> in the sticky web of sin. See, you know we can't hide it. I don't care how many times you circle around the block. See, you know we can't hide it. I don't care how many times you double back. See, you know we can't hide it. I don't care how many times you look over both shoulders. You know we can't hide it. I don't care how many times you change your name at the check-in desk at the hotel. It don't matter. You can't hide it because the Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 14, uh, for God shall bring every work into judgment. With every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil, you ain't going to hide it from God. That's why as a church, as God's chosen people, need to focus our lives on Jesus. Let's go back to the scripture reading in John 12. We find in the earlier verse that Jesus lets his disciple know that the hour has come or it is time for him to be glorified. But in order for him to be glorified, he has to die. <clears throat> verse number 27. John chapter 12 and verse number 27 it says now is my soul troubled and what shall I say Father save me from this hour but for this cause came I unto this hour verse 27 says that Jesus has a problem his soul is troubled, but when he is, but what is he going to do? Better yet, what would you do if you knew that you were in a position that you could not get rid of? Jesus couldn't get out of it because it was prophesied long ago that Jesus would die for our sins. Isaiah 53, verse 7, and, uh, uh, and verse number 8. It said he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shearer is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from the prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living for the transgression of my People was he stricken. You know, Jesus wasn't going to get out of that. See, we can't even take the punishment for the things that we do. So how are we going to sacrifice ourselves for someone <clears throat> or something that we didn't even do? That's what we should be able to do. John 15, 13 says, Greater love has no man than this, that a man lie down, lay down his life for his friends. See, I know someone out there is saying, you must be crazy. I'm not dying for nobody. 1 Peter 2.21 says Christ left us an example to follow. Or in other words, Jesus is the standard by which we are to pattern our lives today. Look back at John 12.27. Jesus says his hour 
has come. But he can't say to his father, save me, because that is why he came here in the first place, to die for our sins. He can't say, well, father, just uh, take, bring me back now. I, I, I've changed my mind. Just, see, the Bible said God, don't, God is not a liar. It's impossible for God to lie. Jesus come here to die for our sins, and that what, that's what he did. Now look at what, what Jesus did. He said, he said he glorified God's name. He exalted his Father. He highly esteemed God the Father. Now if we are to pattern ourselves after Jesus, and he's lifting up his Father, then it's our time to lift him up. It's our time to lift up Jesus. See, we should be in the business of lifting up Jesus. See, if we're lifting up Jesus, then we are filling our days with praising and exalting him. And if we are doing that, uh, then we won't have much time for all that other stuff that we don't need. Amen. That stuff that gets us in trouble. You know what I'm talking about, the works of the flesh. We can find that in in Galatians 5, 19 through 21. We can find out about murdering and liars and whoremongers and all thieves and all that stuff we, we do. And I, 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 I really don't want to say spare time. We try to praise God in our spare time. We ain't got time for many other times. See, people are doing everything under the sun. See, if you, if you can think of it, we'll do it. You know, years ago we can see some of the things that folk wouldn't dare say. You wouldn't hear it on TV. Now you turn your television on and you hear all kinds of stuff. You hear boys who said they, they now they're girls. And girls who are saying that they're boys. And that's not the worst of it. You got parents that agree with it. Instead of teaching the truth. They don't have to like it. But we should be willing to tell the truth. We don't want the greater condemnation. I know that. God has created some brilliant folk, but instead of using what God has given us to lift up Jesus, <coughs> we will find something else to use it for. Psalms 106.39 says, Thus were they defiled with their own works, and went a whoring with their own inventions. That's something. It wasn't nobody else's stuff. It was their own. God didn't make us that way. Ecclesiastes 7.29 says, Lo, this only I have found that God has made man upright, but they have sought out many inventions. See, God made us right. But we don't come up with some, some idea in our head. And, 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 and we we just uh, you know, we just going we just losing it we're giving up on God and one day we're going to close our eyes and we're going to be just like the rich man we're going to open them up again in torment all because we don't want to give in to what God has told us to do we can't find an evil you we can find an evil use for just about anything. How about we find a, a good use for something? Every time we find something, we, we, we hear about these drugs. Where are these folks getting these ideas at? They come up, well, this here is more, 50 times more potent than this drug, the, the one before it. 
and we can't find a good use for something, we should be able to find a good use for some things. The Bible says in James 4 and 17, it says, Therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth is not, to him it is sin. See, remember we, uh, we read in Romans 9 that God would have destroyed his chosen people, children of Israel. Say, so would have destroyed them just like he did Sodom and Gomorrah. But if it, if it had not been for Jesus Christ, See, God used the children of Israel as the avenue in which to bring Christ to this world. Now the children of, of Israel was God's chosen people. Who are his chosen people today? We are the church of Christ. Don't that make sense? The church of Christ. The son of God. The anointed one. That kind of, you know, the body of Christ. That makes a lot of sense, don't it? Shows his ownership. Paul said the only reason he did it was because of the promised seed hadn't made it here yet. Church, I'm here to tell you that the promised seed, Jesus Christ, has arrived and gone back to heaven. Apostle Paul said in 1 Timothy 3, 15, 17, 17, these things write I unto thee, hoping to come unto thee shortly, but if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillow and ground of truth. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness, God has manifest, or was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Church, Jesus has come and gone back to sit at the right hand of his Father, which is in heaven. Church, is our time to lift up Jesus. See, God raised them up out of a chosen nation that, has, that should have been destroyed. The Romans raised them up on Calvary's cross. God raised them up the third day out of the grave. The Bible says in Acts chapter 1, he was raised up by a cloud and received up out of the apostles' sight back into heaven. And the Bible says that there were two men that stood by in white apparel which also say, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which was taken up from you into heaven, shall come, shall, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. See, they said the same way he left out of here is the same way he's coming back. 2 Thessalonians 1 and verse 7 and 8 says, And to you who are troubled, rest with us. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flame, in flame and fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Church, I'm here to tell you that if you haven't lifted up Jesus, then it's your turn. Three quick points about lifting up Jesus. And then I'm done. <clears throat> See, we, we need to know why, how, and when do we lift up Jesus. Why? Because John 3, 16 and 17 said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent his Son, uh, uh, sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Now that was the why. Here's the how. By obeying the word of God. As 
they're living a life that is pleasing and acceptable in the eyesight of God and not the life that we've been living in our past. When? Start right now. From this very moment, see, God has given us a second chance to lift up Jesus. There is not there is not going to be too many more chances. Today may be your last chance to lift up Jesus. James 4 and 14 says, Whereas ye uh, know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Before I extend the invitation, let me tell you about another lifting up. Turn your Bibles to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 14 through 18. It says, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with, him, with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall be, excuse me, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Maybe someone here today who has not been lifting up Jesus. There may be someone here today who is burdened down with life's heavy weights and uh, need to ask for prayer. There may be someone here today that is finding it difficult to get through this bogged down uh, world of sin. You know, there may be someone out there that's listening, that's one well. What, uh, 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 I'm not a child of God, but how do I become one? Well, first, you must hear the word. After that, what you've heard, you must believe that Jesus uh, 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 is the Christ. That he died, was buried, and rose again the third day. Then you must repent of your sins. And then you must confess Jesus to be the Son of God. And then you have to go down in the watery grave of baptism and raise up a new creature. You can do that right now if there's anyone here that needs whatever. As we all stand and sing a song of invitation, won't you come? Lord, I want to be a Christian in 